the world might feel a bit more chaotic and a bit more divided. It's easy to forget sometimes that there are constants. Your home's still your home, your family's still your family, and all the structures of our society are still there to look after you if you need it. Here we go. George's resource. Adult male, code red trauma, 10 minutes. Activate the helipad. There's been an explosion on a building site. Heart red 200. Open your eyes, open your eyes. Imagine having to work here. Hello, Annie, can I help? St George's, London. It's all going to kick off now. One of Britain's busiest A&E departments. Are we ready to roll? We'll carry on CPI. Oh, goodness me, it's all happening, isn't it? We need to fix that or you won't survive. Is it? Uh... A place where life... <laughs> Would you say I was fit, Doctor? Honestly, I think I'm quite fit. Love. You are my everything. I love you, and it's OK. And loss. Oh, Mum. I'm so sorry. Unfold every single day. For every bad thing that you see, there is something equally wonderful out there. Filmed across one 24-hour period, these are the stories of a nation and its health service. I thought I was going to die. You're definitely not going to die. You've got too many good doctors and nurses here. When people experience really significant illness or injuries, we see people pull together, we see relationships get stronger, and we see people reflect on what really is the most important things in their life. Whatever happens, it's going to be OK. I love you. Love you too. Maria just believes in being, it sounds like such a cliche, but the best person she could be. Honestly, she is probably the bubbliest, sweetest, most unselfish person you're ever going to meet. She will give you as much time as you need. The whole community loves her as a mum. Accidents causing delays. Wimbledon Parkside's been closed off for the last half an hour, causing big problems on the A3. It's also very slow coming from Wimbledon Village towards Tibbetts Corner. St George's. Yep. And they're in RTC. 51-year-old woman is being rushed to St George's after crashing her car at speed. Adult female made trauma, ETA 10 minutes. Female into a lamppost at 40 miles an hour. Hypertensive with the juices of 14, uh, 13. Her son is travelling to A&E along with a family friend. So I was at home. I was on my way to a festival. I got all dressed up and I was ready to go. And then the phone rang. And my nan picks up this phone and she, like, sort of folds inwards and she puts the phone down. We're like, Nam, like, what's going on? And she's like, your mum's been in a car accident. And I'm like, the hell, what do you mean your mum's been in an accident? I was everywhere. James was at home as well. We're like, well, OK, we need to start making our way to the hospital then. And as we're driving, we see this car up in flames. I'm like, is that mum's car? And James is like, it's, nah, it can't be. And so we stopped, we got out. As we're walking towards it, the whole front of the car just demolished. When I finally saw the number plate and it was mum's number plate, I started getting really, really shaky. I was so scared. Looking at the crash itself, I was just thinking, like, how will she survive that? One, two, three. Five, seven, eight, seven. 
Thank you. Uh, Maria, 51 years old, has been travelling home, uh, driver of her car. She's been coming back from dialysis. Okay. She has been witness to suddenly accelerate, possibly in excess of 40 mile an hour, across the approaching carriageway and into a lamppost. Doesn't want to recall any of the events. Um, significant damage to the vehicle. She's been lifted out by a member of the public. Injuries wise, she's complaining of pain to the right side of her chest, which is where her pick line goes for the dialysis. Thank you very much. Maria, do you remember what happened? I just remember that bike was on the other side of the road. Are you in pain? Maybe my chest. Your chest, where's the pain? Right side? Okay, right side chest pain. Looking after a trauma patient can be a game of speed when you're thinking about what are the immediate threats to life. Left quadrant pain. Mm -hmm. Epigastric pain. So if you've got a patient who's coming in with chest pain following an RTC, it could be pain because they've damaged the bones in their spine or they've damaged the big blood vessel they aorta. Look, it, look up here. Yeah, well done. The other thing you've kind of got to have an eye on is why did they crash into the first place? You do need to take the time to think about their past medical history. Have they had an event at the wheel that's led them to have this accident? And pupils are equally reactive. I'll scan her head to pelvis. Hi, I'm Paul, I'm one of the nurses. The doctors have finished doing you a quick once over, and the next step's CT scan. They've arrived. All right, OK. I felt scared, I felt hopeless, I felt like there was nothing I could do. She's so frail and she's so fragile, anything can happen to her. Yeah, I was, I was really afraid. I was really afraid of what could happen to Mum. So, ready, steady, slide. Maria is having an urgent CT scan after hitting a lamppost at 40 miles per hour. Her nephew, friend James, and her eldest son, Ash, are waiting in recess. OK, my dear, it's all, all the sharp bits gone. Growing up, I always felt like my mum gave me more love than anybody else's mum ever gave them, which is really weird. And so, me and Mum were really close growing up. We used to have all these great conversations together. We would um, sit up all night talking about whether aliens exist or whether, like, what love means, or all these, like, random things. I just thought she's the coolest person that's ever existed. I'm one of four, yeah. Mum's half Greek Cypriot, half Indian Punjabi. And then my dad is Mauritian. So we always grew up and said, oh, we're like a cocktail. Our household was really busy. We used to have like everyone over. All of our friends would come through the front door and everyone would stay over. And sometimes you'd have a house full of like 15 people. Breathe normally. Yeah, as a kid, I remember just like mom would cook food and she would be cooking five or six dishes constantly. As a kid, you, I guess you never really appreciate it. I was like, mom, I just want chicken nuggets. Like, stop making like 10 meals. She wants to be the provider for everyone. Finish, my dear. And people would turn to our mum for support and love more than they would turn to their own parents. Okay. I'm just gonna give you some painkiller one as soon as we go back, okay? My mum, she had so much love to give that she wanted to be the mum for everyone. She's probably the most beautiful person I've ever met in my whole entire life. They say you don't realise 
or appreciate all of the moments you have with somebody until it's too late. I guess it hit me all of a sudden when mum actually did fall unwell. Everyone's an idiot. We're all idiots. No that no one got hurt. You didn't do anything wrong. Mum had her first heart attack when I was eight years old. She was 35. Eight years later, mum's kidney started like failing. She became so frail and so fragile, things have really changed. At the beginning, it was, why my mum? Like, why has she got to be unwell? Why can't we have a normal mum? All of a sudden, that person that I could turn to, that we all love, was no longer available, and that was hard. It was really hard. Rush. I'll send you a Snapchat of it in a minute, Jay. Come here, oops, turn around so I can send a picture to Auntie Jay. Leave it, baby, don't itch it, don't itch it. They're awful, Jay. Not even the nurse know what kind of a rush it is. Because she's been quiet all morning, Jay. When is she ever quiet? Can I get a drink, please? Go and one more drink, but you're going to end up peeing for Britain, love. I want to see Nanny. What Nanny do you want to see? Julie, where you going then? Oh, say hello then. Oh, when he don't. I want to see Mummy. No, because you keep hanging up, don't you? Ronnie has been brought into A&E by his dad Callum after persistently vomiting at home. I want to get on a Ronnie buggy. Do you want to get into Ronnie's buggy? Go on and sit down. Ronnie was a brilliant baby. He was quiet. Now he's a complete opposite. He's got so much energy. In the mornings, he'll come up and give you a big cuddle. Um, he'll walk down the road and just say, you're right, mate, to anyone. He's just so confident. I love him. I want to see Daddy. I am Daddy. I always wanted to be a dad, which is weird, because boys don't usually want that. They just want to go out and have fun. And it sounds really weird, but I'd prefer to sit at home with my children and my wife and have a lovely night with them than go out and get drunk and, and not remember what's happened the next morning. How are you feeling? I want to see a doctor. You will see the doctor in a minute, but you have to wait. Because there's one more person in front of us. I've been a dad since I was 17. And at first, I was so worried about judgment of people they would stereotypically say, you're young dad, you're probably not working, you're probably claiming benefits. But people don't realise that I've worked so hard to get where I am now. I want to lay down. You want to lay down? Yeah. Okay. You're tired, aren't you? There you go. I knew that I wanted to be a dad, and I think that stemmed from the fact that I wanted to give a child exactly what I got from my dad. He worked a lot, but when he did have time, he spent that time with us. My dad really opened my eyes to what family meant. Baby boy asleep. But then very out of the blue, I found out the truth about my dad. George's recess, go ahead. 85-year-old male. An 85-year-old man is being rushed to St George's after falling at home. 109 irregular. Oh, I have to call ETA four minutes. The man's granddaughter is his carer and is traveling with him in the ambulance. 
I came downstairs in the morning. Nighttime carer was with him. So I checked the CCTV to check what had happened. And that's when I discovered that he'd had quite a severe fall. My first fear was he'd hit his head. It was scary. So straight away I just phoned an ambulance. And then I called my mum and let her know. When you've got elderly parents, it's the phone call that you dread. Uh, three, please, guys, on the left. It was a heart-wrenching moment because this fragility, this vulnerability. That was never my dad. Uh, so this is 85-year-old Ron. It was 3 o'clock this morning. He's had a slight tumble. OK. Uh, uh, he's on anticoagulants because he's got AF. The granddaughter just said he just doesn't look himself. OK. Thank well, you very much. All right, team. Hello. How are you? Terrible. Terrible? What's wrong? Yeah, everything. Everything? That's not good, is it? No. Is it from a nursing home? No, I think from home with carers. A fall leading to a head injury can potentially be life-threatening. If someone has a bit of confusion, it often means that the consequences of that fall have been more significant, potentially a bleed in the brain. He's more confused than normal, which is enough for me to be worried about him. He'll need a head scan. On your way to the hospital, you're imagining all sorts of scenarios because you're thinking, I don't know what I'm coming to see. Hello. Sorry, we're just going to go over to the CT scan, sir, OK? You're sort of fearing the worst. So you're thinking that that could be his final moments. Ellen, uh -huh. going to a CT scan for you, OK? Yeah. 85-year-old Ronald needs an urgent CT scan after falling at home and hitting his head. His daughter Angela, granddaughter Fiona and great-granddaughter Carly are waiting to see him. Keep your arms up nice and high there. Okay. Now it's really important you stay nice and still for this scan, okay? My dad was quite good looking when he was younger. He was always slim, trim, very sporty. He loved weight training, so there's quite a lot of photos of him in the muscle poses. He loved looking after himself. Breathe in and hold your breath. My mum and dad met because my dad was friends with my mum's uncle. They got chatting and arranged to meet. And on the night my dad went to collect my mum for the date, he couldn't remember her name. So he waited on the other side of the road and then my mum came out and she said, why didn't you knock? He said, I couldn't remember your name. <laughs> they married the following year. Mum was 17, Dad was 19. Married for 65 years. They loved each other. Breathe normally. My mum and my dad had six children. It was a very chaotic household, but we always had clean clothes, good food. He was the provider. Dad was a gents hairdresser, had his own shop in Ballam. Ron's hairdressers. I think when he was younger, his favourite was probably the Tony Curtis look. OK, so we're going to back onto your bed now, OK? Looking back, Dad's always thought he was in charge because he went to work, but really it was Mum that pulled all the strings. Go. Hold up. My favourite memories from my childhood are with my nan and my granddad going to Nan and Grandad's house down in Canvey Island. It was a fun place to go. We would go to the car boots, to the beach. 
granddad had a Volvo and it was a seven seater. So there was two seats in the boot and they faced backwards out the window. So it looked like he was going backwards. And that was just me and my brother would fight to get in the back. They was happy times. Your family will come soon, OK? Yeah. Get his daughter in, is that OK? Of course. Hello, Angela and Fiona. Yeah. Fiona, do you live with Granddad? At the moment, yeah. At the moment. Yeah. So what we're going to do is I'm going to take a look at head scan, make sure his head's yeah. OK. I'll see what his blood tests look like. Do you want to come with me? Hello, Trouble. Look what I have. Come with it. We can go there. Yeah. <laughs> you wished. We, we can, can't we? Not yet. Oh, they're just running some more tests. Running more tests? What for? Well, you had a fall in the night. You fell out of So they want to make sure that you're all right. In later years, my mum had heart problems and she was really ill. And my dad was doing everything. He would be doing washing and cooking, shopping. He really, you know, stepped up. You got a headache or anything, or just no, tired? No, just tired? Just tired. You can just nod off when you want. Looking back, whilst Grandad was caring for Nan, we had suspicions that Grandad had some sort of health issues. Nan, she'd always say to you, Oh, he don't know how to work the microwave. Oh, he hasn't got me this when I've asked him to. After Nan passed away, it was almost like he was lost without her. Things became a lot more pronounced. should take art. Some art, kind of, art, art. Yeah, yeah. some art kind of it. art I think you should take. Because you've said that you want to be a couple of things, don't you? I want to be a forensic scientist, I want to be an artist, a fashion designer, I want to be loads of things. Mm. Would you wanna, what was your dream job, except from sleeping in a bed? <laughs> Ronnie, yeah. Ronnie is waiting to be seen by doctors after a prolonged bout of vomiting. Hello, sir. How's Hello, you are. Right? My name is Adil. I'm one of the A&E doctors, sir. How's he doing, sir? Um, he ain't been good. On Friday, he was extremely dehydrated, um, and How he's many? not keeping anything down. When did the whole episode start? The whole start episode started? started on Wednesday. Wednesday, and so it's it started been going on from Wednesday to now. No. And then you've come because he's still yeah. vomiting yeah. throughout. Fine. Let's just lift him, put him on the bed. I'll examine. He'll him. wake up anyway. It's fine. When I was little, I remember walking home from school, and just looking to my mum saying, "Oh, I've been told at the school my dad wasn't my biological dad. Is it true?" And um, she sat me down and she said, "Yeah, it is." Sorry, buddy. Oh. I'm so sorry. I thought, no, it can't be true. He, he's done so much for us like, that, that it's not real. You can go to sleep. You can go back to sleep. That's completely fine. And then I felt quite sad. I thought, oh, I'm not part of him. Let's examine him now and let's challenge him with oral fluid. So what I mean to say, take a glass of water, for example, and then tell him that he has to finish that over an hour. We need to see if he keeps that down. We'll, we'll definitely keep an eye on him for a little bit longer mm -hmm. today. And then my mum, she asked if I wanted to know my biological dad. I'm so sorry. You're OK. Daddy's right there. Look, look, Daddy's right there. In a way, I had to do it for myself to know who this man was. Let me have a listen again. And I did meet him. But he wasn't like my dad. He, it didn't feel, no, it didn't feel like that. Sorry, Bobs. Then I thought, what is this doing to my stepdad? My dad has brought me up, he's given me everything I need in life. What is this doing to him? You gonna sit up? Yeah. So my stepdad, he did adopt me, and I took his last name. Yes. Sit up on the bed. 
I felt it was the right thing to do. And then from there, I loved my childhood. Oh, good boy, give me a big ah. And then I was 17, I was ready to start my own family. You gonna do it? Yeah. Go on then. Go, uh, uh. Boy. But I could never imagine it would happen like this. Well done. We're done. Well done. Okay. So let's get him some water. Let's try and get a urine sample off him again. Okay. okay. And then we'll take it from there. Great. All right, brilliant. Thank you. All right. Maria, the potassium in your blood is a bit high, so I'm gonna give you some calcium, okay? Maria suffers from kidney failure and was returning from hospital when her car collided with a lamppost. It shouldn't take long to be effective, okay? How are the scans? We don't know yet, okay. We need to wait for the report. Okay. She is awaiting the results of her CT scan. Well, sorry, Mama. More than usual. What kind of way? Is it a tightness or is it a sharp pain? Since the first heart attack, her condition has been slowly declining. I've been a carer for her from childhood. We went through the process together. Mum would go on dialysis and I'd go and sit with her for four hours, five hours at a time. But then I went to uni and, you, and I got an awesome job in a bank. So then I started to be around less and less. I think that's when James came on the scene. I'm going to be honest, right? I didn't click with him. James had his own problems. But Mum's everyone's therapist. Okay, please. You hate yourself. Don't, don't hate yourself. Stop being silly, you. Well, how can you hate yourself when you have so many people who love you around you? I knew her son, Ricky. First day I ever met Maria was when he'd asked me to come around for a barbecue. At that point in time, I was unemployed, drinking pretty much every day. Ash really didn't like me. He just thought that I was probably someone who would just take advantage. My dear, I'm going to give you some painkiller, OK? Maria, she definitely saved me. She is literally like a guardian angel to me. Hey, hey, honestly, don't look, don't worry. No, everyone's just, just everyone's <laughs> just worried about you getting okay now. We're not worried about anything else. So you need to put our minds at ease, yeah? Like you always do. It started off, I used to go around there, just making sure she was okay. I'd go out shopping with her. I'd carry all the bags make her cups of tea, you know, keep her company. We kind of just clicked. Ooh. I connected so well with her. Maria became a mum figure to me. Babe, 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 you, you have to relax a little bit. I know it's hard, just take deep breaths. But for me, things were really difficult growing up. Come on, take deep breaths with me. My dad had cancer and passed away when I was five. My mum struggled to deal with it herself. And I got put into care at the age of 13. That's it. That's it. I didn't feel like I fitted in at all. I had 11 social workers in three years. I didn't have anyone there to go, it's OK, don't worry. With Maria, it was so easy and so simple. I was talking to her about all my issues before I even realised. And no one's ever given me that time and put that much effort in. If it weren't for her, I don't know if I would have got over a lot of my personal issues. And because of that, I'll always, always be there for her. You can replace a car, we can't replace you. Come on. Ash. 
Ash. Mm. That's quite high. Yeah. She's Is she OK? Um, her heart's going a bit wild. Two, five, six, over 100. That's crazy. Her blood pressure is very high, 250 over 140. Do you think you'll then be able to talk to the consultant or something? You can get them on the phone. <laughs> where your blood pressure gets so high or climbs really quickly, it's a genuine medical emergency. What's not adding up to me is I've got a lady with a very bad number on her blood pressure. So, I mean, she's got nothing in the kind of CT that would explain it. If you don't fix that, it starts to cause damage to your organs. You may start to develop heart failure. You may start to have bleeds into your brain. The end result is that you die. I'm just gonna go for a cigarette. Okay. All right, Carly's here. Yeah. All right, she'll come and sit with you. I'll try and find your bas basty blonde. Uh, yeah. You all right, Grandad? Sure to be here. We've got to get that there, that curtain there. She's got to come back over here. You listening? Yes, I'm listening, Grandad. Yeah, we're, we're listening then. We actually, we want a, a bloke from over there yeah. coming here and doing our, our, our things for us. All right. And your mother, and they haven't done it. You better go and tell them. Yeah, I'll tell her when they come back in, yeah? No, not when they come back in. You want it down now. It's no good doing that. And then, then they, they come here and say, oh, oh, well, we didn't know. There was nobody, nobody was there to do it. Do what? To do the thing that's on our fingers. Yeah, that's meant to be there. Here, yeah, nurse, got to do, do, do the job. Oh, OK, Grandad, please, can you sit down? Well, come on, then. Yeah, we'll do it in a minute when Fiona gets You can't do it in a minute, and you must be stuck in here on your own. Did he trip over his own foot and that's why? Is that Carly? Hello. Hello, Grandad's trying to get out of the bed. OK, call in there. I'll be in in two seconds. What? He's trying to get out of bed. You all right there, sir? No. What do you need? We, we need a, a nurse. That, that'll be me, sir. My name's Chris. I'm one of the yeah, nurses okay. here. How can I help? Yeah, we want a nurse now. For what? Yeah. What do you need the nurse for? Because, you, because you've got nothing there. What do you need? We need... Do you feel poorly? No. No? Do you know, do you know where you are? Do you know where not, you are? Not exactly, no. All oh, right, well, you're in hospital. You had a fall at home. Yes. So we brought you in to get you checked out. So that's why you're here, all right? It's dementia. It's a life sentence. Grandad was diagnosed with dementia in June 2017. Did, did I fall today? Yeah. You did. Where did I fall today? In the living room at home. So it's, it's got to be looked at there. You have been looked at. You've had a scan on your head. So you're in hospital in the A&E department. You're in St George's. Everything here is fine. Yeah. He's got no recollection of certain things. You know, before, he was a very proud man. He's now dependent, so he relies on someone fully being diagnosed to eventually, when he passes, it's not something that gets better. Do you want a cup of tea or anything, Dad? Yeah, yeah have a cup of tea. Can we you want a cup of tea? Have a cup of tea. We'll see what we can I do. Want, what? Thank you. Thank you, you so much. Dementia, to me, is a loss of the person while they're still alive. Not knowing who your children are or who your wife is, it's quite cruel. The dad I knew is almost gone now. The dementia itself has just taken them little bit by little bit. You all right, Dad? Yeah. What's that say? Nodding. Doctors have the results of Ronald's CT scan. 
Hello. So the scan looks absolutely fine. It, there's no bleed or anything, so he hasn't got an issue following yeah, the head injury. Good. We're going to keep him in hospital. All right. Because he's so unsteady on his feet. I don't want him going home and falling again yeah. and things like that. I've asked the medical team to admit him to our beds. It, I don't think it will be for long. You all right? Yeah. We're going to get you sorted, OK? Well, it's not where we wanted to be. No. But we'll make do. That's right, yeah, that's it, yeah. We'll make do. Yeah. Dad now lives in the house he was born in. Fiona is the full-time carer. I'm there for him as his companionship, as his friend. Sometimes he'll call me Fran, and I say to him, no, that's your wife, Fran. And he just laughs, and he says, oh, so what's your name? And I've reintroduced myself, and I say, I'm your granddaughter. And then I think, well, it could be worse. <laughs> He's not distressed. He knows my face. He's happy when he sees me. If you keep your lips closed for me, I'm just yeah. going to dab some water on them. Yeah. Keep them closed. Yeah. And he'll tell me stories of bygone days. He says, oh, you're my best granddaughter. <laughs> I say to him, don't tell the others that. <laughs> All right. Mm. Go on then, show me. <laughs> yeah. I love it when you smile like that. Yeah. I've made memories with him that I never thought I would make, which is by spending all that time with him. And knowing that I've made a difference is more than what it's worth. Hey, hey ready to go? So I'll take you to the ward now. OK. All right, well, so Thank you very much. Try and get you home as soon as possible. He worked hard all his life. And then he cared for my mum. I think he deserves the best now. We have to kind of try and give him that. Ronnie, you're going to have to wake up because you need to do a sample. Doctors are waiting for a urine sample from three-year-old Ronnie to check for signs of infection. Give you some more special drink. Yeah. I first met Ronnie when he was two months old. I met his mum, Lois, and she kept coming in where I worked and kept watching me. And I thought, oh, what's she looking at? When I got with Lois, I was very nervous about getting too close to Ronnie. <laughs> come on, come and sit with Daddy. The day I met Ronnie was important. I was feeding him, and I didn't have a clue what I was doing. Can you give me some more special drink? Oh, yeah. I was just holding him, like, am I holding him the right way? Am I doing what I should be doing? Um, so I didn't, I didn't have a clue what I was doing. I was, I was new to it, but I loved it. Loved every minute of it. Clever boy. That first time I held him, and he was two months old, and I, I looked at him, and I just thought, this is what I want. Come on, then. Is it all done? Yes. You sure? Yes. Clever boy. Right, I'll go and give this to the doctor. Come on, then. I decided to take Lois away, so we went to Brighton. We got a really nice room. We sat by the window on the seafront, and I pulled out a ring and I said, the ring that I'm giving you is a promise and that's my promise to, no matter what happens, love Ronnie like he's my own and give you everything that you need. Ronnie? Yeah. This Ronnie or is there another one? Ronnie. <laughs> I wanted her to know that I wasn't going to walk out on her and Ronnie. I wanted her to know that I was there and I was going to stay. Urine tests showed and there's no significant signs of severe dehydration or anything right. in the urine. The main thing is we just have to find a way to stop the irritation in his stomach yeah. somehow, but he should get better in a few days. Honestly, it's the best thing I've ever done. I could never imagine life differently. Take your dummy out. What'd you say? Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you very much. You've been a very good patient. My family, they mean the world to me. I couldn't be me without them.
Hello, hi. So the good news is the CT is normal. Yeah. Okay, so I'm just going to clear her neck. Maria's blood pressure has stabilized and her CT report shows no significant injuries from the car crash. But doctors have referred her to the kidney specialists for further investigation. Hello, I'm Claudia. I'm from the renal team. I'm going to take you upstairs to Champneys. Ultimately, you just need to go back on the dialysis machine. All right. And then we'll recheck your blood to make sure the potassium levels come down. And we'll think about trying to get you home. But at the moment, I think you're in too much pain. Yes. So if you Sorry. need to stay for longer here so we can give you strong painkillers, then that's fine. We'll find you a bed. All right. OK. Yeah. See you in a bit. Thank you. Thank you. Right, Thank you very much. Oh, mummy. I know you feel guilty, don't you? Disgustingly. What happened? A few scratches? That's it. Lovely. When I left and I wasn't around as often when I was working, James had developed a relationship with my family, especially my mum. He called my mum mum. And I was like, who is this guy that just keeps coming into our house? <laughs> yeah, she will kill you. So you need to survive so she can kill you. Who is that? Nan. Nan. <laughs> but watching how he was around mum and how much he helped her and how much he did for her, I think over time I was like, actually, you are, you are a really beautiful person. I really appreciate you. I really appreciate everything you do for you. Know? Like I said, I treat her like my mum. I always will, I always have. You know. Even if her kids don't like me at this beginning, but, you know. Yeah, I like you now, so it's all right. Yeah, better late than never. Mm. <laughs> yeah, no, I do feel part of the family. So it's like I'm the adopted son. She is literally one of the strongest people I've ever seen in my life. Yeah, I think she might be the strongest person I know. I've always wanted to have that close connection to people who I can trust. And, you know, I can trust every single one in the family. And that's down to Maria. Are you going to look after me? I ain't going anywhere until I offer dialysis. Oh, James, I feel so miserable. I can imagine. Look, the main thing is, you are 100% safe. Anyone could be a parent. It takes someone special to be a dad or a mum. Time and love. That's what makes a family. Sorry to wake you. We're going to go up to the ward now so you can have your dialysis, OK? Whether it's the family you created or whether it's a biological family, family's everything is the essence of who a person is. Now, we have two children, uh, Ronnie and Gracie. Uh, Ronnie's three years old and Gracie is eight months old. They are my children. They're, I love them both equally. That's the way it is. And I've got my little family. We've been told by pretty much every single doctor we don't expect it to be around for the next six months. I think you never really appreciate somebody that much until you realize that time is actually that limited. I'm very grateful that I'm still here to see the kids, to watch them laugh, to watch them grow, to guide them. I'm not ready to go yet, I'm a fighter. My granddad's taught me the, the way of the family values. Family's important. You provide for your family, you look after your family.
and his family were on? Everything. Everything. You done good. I'm proud of you. Well yeah, done. Thank you very much. All right. Mm. Yeah. <laughs>